Hi, Misha here. And as I said in a recent black box, kind of took a little time off and let some things come in that I'd ordered. Well, one of these during Black Friday, the other one before. And both are quite new figures in the Star Wars Black Series. And uh, both are in the 6-inch scale. But actually, both are taller than 6 inches. One of them quite a bit so. On the left, we have the KX security droid. This is from the Gaming Greats line. It's been seen in Jedi Fallen Order, other things, and yes, it's basically K2SO or his evil twin. We can call him K4B8, but these are the Imperial Securities. And over here, we have something from the standard line, but considered a deluxe figure. This is Ned B, or Ned 1, from the pretty recent Obi-Wan series. And he is more of a construction worker droid. He's classed as a loader. And he helps the rebels, well, the proto-rebels. And since both are kind of larger scale type things, you know, non-standard, and why not? And both are brand new at the end of 2022, I thought we'd look at them. But first, something else new at the end of 2022, the plastic-free packaging. Here are my thoughts on it. Both figures came in the plastic free, but I don't have the one for the security droid because I don't keep my packaging anyway. I didn't before and certainly not now. But since Ned B just came in when I'm recording this, not when you're seeing it, but when I'm recording it, I still had, I actually was about to throw this in the trash and I thought, eh, I'll show you first. It's a little oversized because he's a deluxe and a relatively bulky boy. But same pattern. Actually, my very first plastic free was the Mandalorian Ahsoka set at Amazon, which came in super early, like beginning of October. Of course, this has got a lot of furor online because, well, inbox collectors. I know this might be a shocker to you. I am not an inbox collector. Yeah, because I'm blind. But, I actually think even if I could see perfectly, just based on my personality, I, I like messing with stuff. I mean, I have guns. I don't have to shoot them. I choose to. I like using stuff. I like taking care of my stuff. But I like using it. I, I kind of think that's the benefit of owning. Otherwise, you could just look at really pretty pictures online. So, the only really reason to inbox collect... Yeah, you can look at it person. It's still, I'm sure, higher res. I, I bet real life is still higher res than 4AK. But I think at that point, it gets more about the chase, about the actual collecting itself, and less about the object of your collecting. Personal opinion. Not really throwing shade much. But again, I think one of the benefits to owning is being able to crack open boxes. These are still just held open with tape. Inside, there's a tray. There's these paper straps that hold your figure. And uh, the figures actually come in kind of waxy paper, which I like. It's less likely to smudge the paint and bend things. And what I really like, the accessories come in little bags, not all jumbled together, but actually separated from each other. That is amazing, because one bad thing about the old plastic packaging, it bent things. It, it, it caved in helmets, it bent antenna, lightsabers were real bad. Even if it didn't, sometimes getting it out, you'd have to kind of bend. With this method, there's no pressure on your accessories. So if it's put into the package straight and true, with good paint, this isn't going to muck it up. I really like that. Of course, the downside... Yeah, you can't see inside, although there is a picture. And they do actually give more info on the outside of the box than they used to. 
some people always worried that, uh, oh, people would swap figures out. I think now that these are hitting shelves, that, that fear is kind of lessening. A couple of reasons. For one, it, theoretically, could it happen? Yeah. But in practice, does it happen? Probably not much more than just the company accidentally putting the wrong figure in. You know, mistakes happen. If it does, return it. No, no problem. And if wherever you're buying from won't take a return for that purpose, stop buying from them. That's a horrible policy. Another thing, you're thinking about people in stores buying and they're returning to the store. That is theoretically possible. Most people today, and going forward especially, buy online, especially special figures like this. Actually, the whole reason I uh, paid a little bit more for the gaming great guy is because there's not a... I mean, why would I be going into a GameStop, for one thing, and there's not one in my area anyway? Buying on Amazon or any of the major toy stores... Again, return it if you have a problem. I had... Uh, one of the Mimbin Han Solos come in from Amazon that had a broken uh, blaster. It was easy peasy to return. But in reality, yeah, and speaking of that, there was a run here a while back of the window packaging where people ordered Obi-Wan and got, on Amazon again, uh, Cad Bane. <laughs> so it can still happen because people in a warehouse don't know. Again, people worry about what ifs and maybes instead of actual things. If there was an epidemic of figure swapping, great. But no, I uh, don't mind it at all. One final thing they criticized saying that, oh, these are made of plastic. Whoa, how much is Hasbro really saving? On the plastic itself, probably not a whole lot. What they're really saving on tax credits from governments. Not just the US either. All kinds of governments give companies like Hasbro either favored status, better deals, tax breaks, whatever benefits. From a government perspective, they are actually saving a lot. And since these are meant to be disposable, it actually encourages recycling of paper more too. And, you know, people think about oil and stuff. One day we will run out of petroleum. People think about filling up their gas tanks. What I worry about even if we figure out a way to do green vehicles one day, yeah. what about things that really need plastics? We need oil to make plastic. And there's some things that uh, we might not be able to switch that away from for a very long time. So if we save a little plastic now, it could be something that our ancestors thank us for in the future. Just food for thought. They're not everything oil. But from Hasbro's point of view, it's economics. I don't think this packaging is much cheaper for them to make, really. But I think they get good financial and just honestly political credit with not only the American government, but governments around the world. Regardless, this is what you fucking got. Deal with it or don't. No one's forcing you to buy toys. You're a grown-ass man. Now with that, let's talk about some toys. Because we're grown-ass men and we can do whatever the hell we want, right? Okay, so after that, we'll start with Ned B here because there's not a lot of lure to say about him because he's kind of new. I couldn't, at least at a glance, find an actual model number. He was just classed as a loader droid. He kind of has a construction droid look. Sorry, my... One last thing people have pointed out, too, about this uh, cord on the mic flipping in. Because of the new camera, I have to have my little tripod reversed that I set it on, and it kind of encourages the cord to drift forward, whereas it didn't before. Sorry. Anyway, not a whole lot about him. And if you've seen the Obi-Wan series which I actually encourage you to. I mean, it's, you know, McGregor. I mean, it, it, could it be better? Sure. What couldn't be? But overall, still kind of enjoyed it. And uh, he's not bad in it. He doesn't talk. So at least no uh, L37 stuff going on. But he does help the rebels. He's not a battle droid. Again, construction droid. And uh, I would say this is an actual deluxe figure. He is uh, quite tall, nearly 7 inches in the real world here, meaning he is nearly 7 feet in the 1 to 12 scale. He's also very bulky. There's a lot of heft to this boy. He's got big old feet. He uh, comes with a backpack. You need to plug it in because he wouldn't fit in the packaging adequately otherwise, but it just pops in. It's, it's fine. 
It's got a candle on the back. I, I don't know why. <laughs> nah, again, he's just kind of his role. His head does actually kind of remind me of L37s, though, a little bit. So you get a backpack, and you get a hammer, because, well, he uses it in Obi-Wan. At least he thinks about bashing some stormtroopers with it. But it can't just be a regular hammer. Oh, no, this is a space hammer, because it has uh, wires and valves and cylinders. Oh, my. I wouldn't want to get hit with it. Especially wielded by a droid. In his other hand, though, we have kind of a throwback. This is an E5 blaster. This was the standard and most common blaster of the Separatists. Used by battle droids and others. It could be fired by humans. But it was kind of big and bulky. And it was known for overheating but it was powerful. It was actually a Bactoid creation, although it was mostly built on Geonosis by the Hives. It holds several hundred rounds and can deliver very powerful bursts, although its accuracy was less than stellar. But again, battle droids, they weren't capable of great accuracy either, so just give them a gun, they can shoot a lot and put hurt on something. And um, it's not the lightest, but it's not the heaviest either, about six pounds. And, you know, he uh, utilizes this in OB-1 as well. Kind of nice to see it again. We haven't seen this. And not a whole lot of characters outside the battle droids have come with this blaster. I think Padme did. So that's a reuse. But the backpack and the hammer, as far as I know the hammer anyway, is new. And the, the joints are always really neat on the droids in this series because they don't look at all artificial. Any joint on a human, especially if it's a... You know, bare arm or torso looks weird. But, you know, typical movie thing. He does have a moving head. A little bit anyway. This one's, again, brand new. So very stiff. But yeah, he's considered a deluxe. And um, I don't think that's such a bad thing. Right now, deluxes are about 30 bucks, And now the standards are 25 So you're not paying exponentially more and he is a totally new figure except for that one accessory so you know i'm always going to buy troopers and droids and just fun creative stuff plus he was a neat non-speaking but still neat person in the uh, obi-wan series and several episodes saving people before he sacrificed himself so this is a robot good guy in an all-new mold Let's look at a robot bad guy in an old mold. The KX series, a fourth degree droid. You know, I said it was in Jedi Fallen Order. I think it's also in Jedi Survivor. This is obviously what K2SO originally was. Even though our figure here comes with a less lethal electro staff, although it can still kill. He was proficient in combat with several weapons and tools, as well as just bare hands or clamps. And if you're thinking to yourself, Self, didn't the Imperial Senate outlaw battle droids after the Clone Wars for pretty obvious reasons? You would be correct. As early as 19 BBY, battle droids were outlawed not just for creation, but use. But, Arachid, or Arachid, it reminds me of Arrakis, the manufacturer of the KX series, found a little loophole in the bureaucracy. They did not ban security droids, so that's, this is why he's classed as a security droid. Even though the uh, so-called standard programming that would prohibit normal droids from injuring humans was removed. This is what we have here. I'm not my thing out. Oh well. He uh, has kind of, as it said, exaggerated human proportions, but was meant to have athletic strides with these long legs. He didn't get tired. Long-reaching, powerful limbs. Obviously, he can carry loads. He's got a little backpack on here. 
and he's very tall over seven inches in the figure and uh, seven feet in the real world to scale yeah he uh, had a lot of neat features built in comms gear recharging port basically he was a iPhone that could kill you at least worse than people driving while they text killing he has a black armor plating an imperial symbol on each shoulder if uh, one of the imperial symbols is gold that means he's received further enhancements uh, k4 d8 was uh was it d8 or b8 no well k4 was one such enhanced version that uh, krennic director krennic had and assigned to work with tarkin these guys uh, were already in service by 1817 BBY and they were mostly used to escort dignitaries and important people VIPs guard high-ranking officials like Grin well at the time just all this Moff Tarkin and director Krennic and probably most commonly guard installations they were also used later for uh, occupation forces kind of patrolling keeping civilians in line with these here cattle prods and uh, this one has kind of a neat feature it extends out it's a two-piece piece of plastic with even a third piece working as your not flame but electrical sparkiness you can kind of move it up and down he even has the uh, wiring for it clamped on his arm in two places leading all the way up to this here backpack so it's all a really neat unit and unlike the uh, Ned B he's not considered deluxe even though he does have a pretty complicated accessory technically it's three pieces but really it's just one big piece that works together but since he is a gaming greats A he's reused mostly except for the backpack the uh staff here we've seen with uh, some previous figures like the scout trooper he does cost about the same as a deluxe around 30 bucks although i got slightly impatient for him and paid 35 a couple of months ago he would take orders not just from any stormtrooper but any officer ranked lieutenant or higher so hey here's our uh imperial officer from andor you can give him orders. The KX would really like his gun, but uh, yeah, he's hanging on to it. Of course, this guy's also reuse. And again, pretty valid because he's an officer. I don't mind the Imperial reuse because Iraq had made tons of these for the Empire. And uh, they've been seen ever since Disney took over, first appearing in Rogue One. Not just K2SO himself, but lots of KXs. And... Uh, they were there for the siege of mandalore the night of a thousand tears and other places and of course they fought cal Kestis. neat figure good articulation uh, the head actually does move quite a bit and uh, i like the weapon it's neat fits him well and of course you can give him a gun if you want this wire is really neat just be so somewhat careful with it don't stress it I actually wanted to raise this above his head and have him doing a He-Man. I have the power pose, but I realized that would probably not work with this cord. And It does unclip, but I don't want to clip and unclip it a bunch of times. It might get, you know, stressed and not stay on. This backpack stays on exceedingly well. And since he's kind of got the hunchback look, it doesn't make him too back heavy. But since he is the K2SO mold, he's not super stable. But that's just the design of the droid. We'll let this guy get back to his patrolling and massacring of uh, protagonist fathers. Seriously, if that guy had not killed Andor's father, chances are the rebellion would have lost because Andor probably wouldn't have got involved and Rogue One wouldn't have happened and therefore A New Hope wouldn't have happened. And yeah, it's all that one no-named officer's fault. So our KX. Fun fact, the KX series, I don't know if it stayed in production, but it stayed in service into the... New Republic. The Senate voted to continue using these, 
because they were good. They were versatile. They were uh, they were actually really good at quick analysis, critical thinking, and um, you know independent thinking of that kind of skill. Although they were very literal, so if you gave, were giving one an order, make sure it was literal in order. Uh, yeah, but yeah, they were pretty versatile. And again, they had plenty of Wi-Fi capability. Uh, they, and they also had direct access to the Imperial Network. And uh, fun fact, for those that don't know, the Imperial Network, the uh, basically the Imperial Internet, wasn't something new from the Disney era. It was mentioned in A New Hope. I'm sure they couldn't have conceived the Internet we have today, but it was pretty forward-thinking of old George in 1976. For a comparison, here's my K2SO. Again, these are the same model droid. K2 here was built in 12 BBY. I still kind of think of this guy as K4. Why not? And of course, uh, when he was made, K2 here was a standard droid. Boring personality. It's only after he met Andor that he learned to have some fun. He even met R2-D2 and CP3 at one point. And of course, uh, he actually fought KX series droids on Jeddah and Scarif, finding his own brother. He looks awfully sad here. The figure, I like the K2SO figure, and he was a standard, not a deluxe, but he doesn't come with anything. And he just looks so sad. You know, all he wanted, all throughout Rogue One, he, he just wanted a toy, a friend. So let's give him one. Now he looks much happier. I gave him a SE... 14 are basically just the Imperial Officer's Blaster, which is what Jen Erso finally lets him have it towards the end of the film after he risked his life several times for them and even flew them out of danger. That's another thing these could do. They were pilots because we see him flying a U Wing. And uh, K2SO Gaia got a lot more fun after Andor reprogrammed him, mostly because Andor didn't know how to program. So his program was glitchy and gooba. It's basically like if you find an old Windows XP or Windows 7 machine that hasn't been reformatted in a while and it gets glitchy and weird, but also sometimes kind of fun. He's like that. Some bootleg software, maybe a Trojan or two. Again, he has full comm gear. They should have just sent him in with a virus. You know, why not? Get some ransomware on the uh, Imperial Network. But yeah, very similar figure. But, uh, yeah, different paint scheme. Move that out there, way. The uh, chest plate, I guess it's the same. No? Huh. Yeah, it just feels, I think the texture is more matte on this one. This is shinier because K2SO's got more wear. The one place they really definitely are different is the backpack. He's got a, some antennas here, a little detailing going on. And, of course, our man here doesn't because of his... Backa backa. He, as you see, the little prod doesn't like to stay in one hand, but the nice thing is he can actually hold it two-handed. I'm gonna collapse this in. He can hold it two-handed very well. So if I wanted to keep it on him all the time, I would just put it in both hands. And between those two, kind of gripping him, he uh, he does fine. You can also remove the electricity, which normally I would, but it's it's kind of hard to get them off these, and I don't want to rip it, so I'll just leave it alone. But yeah, I don't like effects. It's just not how I kind of like my stuff boring and static. You can uh, straighten his arm out. There's enough uh, flex in this cord for him to straighten his arm out all the way. Kind of neat. The uh, top one kind of hooks into a slot. The bottom one just kind of free floats up and down. And that's kind of how uh, these were powered, kind of... Uh, close remote powering. Kind of like putting your iPhone on one of those uh, charging plate things. And if you really want to, you can remove the backpack and all that too. It all comes off. When I first bought K2SO a long while back, I thought about using him as just a standard KX series droid in my Imperial lineup, kind of a proto dark trooper. But since this guy came out, he can be the standard and I can put this guy with the Rogue One crew. Does anyone want to see a Rogue One kind of lineup video? I know outside of Jyn Erso, I think most people like them, don't they? 
I enjoyed the film. But I think people have to remember the middle kind of drug. The first is fine. The second, uh, the, the, the third part was great. The middle kind of, eh. I feel like it could have been cut down a bit. But the same can definitely be said for Obi-Wan and, uh, and Boba Fett. When they're good, they're good. But sometimes it's just like, eh. But yeah, these guys, they don't want to stand on their own because half their length are their legs. So if you get one, you're going to need to tack them or stand them. The guns stay in the, his hand pretty well. I wonder if he can double grip it. Oh, perfectly. And it's got a short little double grip, so anything bigger he would. That's one benefit of this mold is there's a lot of flexibility in these joints, and they're very long. So these guys can carry just about anything. Pretty neat, in my opinion. And who doesn't like K2SO? And his, uh... Well, I guess, actually, K2SO is the deviant evil twin. This is the upright law by... This is the, the Blue Lives Matter, the law and order guy. This guy is, uh... K2SO, he's even black. He's Antifa. Definitely. No, I don't mind reuse like this, especially when... Didn't get a whole lot for a while, and some new things come out. I just, I like the Imperial stuff more. Some of the other stuff, I don't mind getting, but drinking sometimes needs involvement. But uh, the KX, I knew I wanted. I did pass on the B-1 battle droid, though, from Jedi Survivor. It's exactly the same. I just don't need it. If it was a little different, yeah. But I'll hold out for the Magna Guard coming next year. That'll be great. So what do you think? Which uh, version do you like better? And, not forgetting old uh, Ned over here. How do you like him? I am. He's definitely the heaviest. I think he warrants being a deluxe, much like the Dark Trooper. I like droids. They're fun. And again, the hinges and stuff. And you don't have to worry about face printing and all that being correct. Easy peasy. Let me know what you think, guys. Want me to do a Rogue One video, or want me to go into some other allied droids, or more bounty hunters, or what do you think? Give me some ideas. Leave them in the comments below. This is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.